Congratulations on taking delivery of your new Capacity Spotter. This latest model comes with outstanding operational and safety features, resulting in improved handling and driver comfort. New items include electric starting, seat lumbar support, a push-button electronic transmission which delivers improved gradability and enhanced performance, and more durable components resulting in less costly and less time-consuming maintenance and repair. This operational orientation video will describe the components, systems, and safety features designed into your capacity terminal tractor and will provide you with detailed instructions on how to operate it safely and efficiently. Let's begin by taking a quick look around. The capacity trailer jockey stands 10 feet off the ground. It's a little more than 15 feet long and about 8 feet wide with a weight of approximately 15,000 pounds. A tilt cab covers the engine compartment. On the right side of the cab is the mirror post, engine access door, and exhaust stack. There's also an air intake on the hood. An optional feature is a top-mounted amber strobe light. This light is shipped in its own box and must be installed. Further along the right side is the hydraulic oil tank. A gauge measures temperature and level of the hydraulic fluid used to lift the fifth wheel. Under the battery box are the cab tilt lift controls. They're electric over hydraulic. Nearby is the safety prop cable used when releasing a tilted cab. The elevating fifth wheel is at the rear. It has a lift height of 16 inches and a lift rating of 70,000 pounds. There is a manual secondary lock on the right side to secure the fifth wheel for highway travel. On the back of the cab hang the two air hose supply glad hand couplers. The blue line connects the tractor service brake system to the trailer brake system. The red line connects the tractor air supply to the trailer emergency brake system. Below these couplers is the electrical supply connector receptacle used to attach the tractor's electrical system to the trailer's clearance, brake and tail lights and the turn signals. Both lines and the electrical supply connector should be connected whenever you're coupled to a trailer. On the back of the cab is a floodlight that illuminates the fifth wheel. On the center cross member behind the engine is the manual reset for the circuit breaker. Nearby are the dipsticks for engine oil and transmission fluid. The 50 gallon fuel tank with integrated step to the rear door is on the left side along with the steps to the driver's door and the left mirror. If you see a Dura-Ride decal on the chassis frame, it means your tractor is equipped with an air spring suspension system that isolates the cab from road shock while providing a stable ride. It minimizes stress to the frame, drivetrain, cab, and most importantly, to you. Interior Familiarization The capacity trailer jockey has two doors, one in the rear and one on the left side. The rear sliding door is the primary entry and exit point. Climb inside. Enter and exit slowly, deliberately, and carefully. A three-point stance should always be used, in which three of four extremities are in contact with the vehicle at all times. Face inward toward steps and handholds and always use the grab handles when entering or exiting. Keep the steps, grab handles, and your shoes free of grease, mud, dirt, fuel, ice, and snow. Use extra care during bad weather. Settle in. The cab is equipped with an air cushion seat. To move it forward or backward, move the lever under the seat to the left. The seat height adjustment control is on the front left side of the seat. Lift the switch to raise the seat, lower it to go down. Next to the height adjustment control is the lumbar support control. Lift the switch for additional support, lower it to reduce. Rotate the seat back control clockwise to tilt the seat back, counterclockwise to tilt it forward. Take a look out the window. The capacity tractor was designed for unobstructed views to the left, center, and right, as well as to the rear. This view field, along with proper adjustment of the mirrors, will allow you excellent vision in all directions. The seat belt provides occupant protection. Adjust it so it fits comfortably yet securely across your lap. Wear it at all times when the tractor is in operation. Let's now look at the controls and instrumentation. Depress the button in the center of the steering wheel to sound the electric horn. The turn signal high beam control lever is on the left side of the steering column. 
Move the lever forward to indicate right turns, back to indicate left turns. Lift the lever to switch from low to high beams. Lift again to return to low beam. The emergency flasher control is part of the turn signal lever. Pull the hazard tab outward to activate. Rotate the lever to either position to deactivate the flashers. On the left side of the dash panel are several gauges. The voltmeter indicates voltage within the electrical system. The hour meter indicates total time the engine has been operating in hours and tenths of hours. This is vital to good maintenance procedures and to keep records on the trailer jockey. The engine oil pressure gauge indicates pressure within the engine lubrication system in pounds per square inch. The normal reading is between 40 and 60 PSI while the tractor is in motion and 15 PSI at idle. The engine water temperature gauge shows the temperature of the engine coolant in degrees Fahrenheit. Normal operating temperature is between 180 and 205 degrees. Gauges on the right side of the dash include the air system pressure gauge, which indicates pressure within both the front and rear air braking systems, measured in both PSI and KPA. Red indicates front pressure, green the rear. Normal operating pressure is approximately 105 to 125 PSI. A warning buzzer will sound if air pressure drops below 60 PSI. The fuel level gauge indicates the level of fuel remaining in the tank. The ignition switch is a key operated three position switch. In the off position, the electrical system is de-energized. The key can be removed. In the on position, the electrical system is energized. The start position is spring loaded. This position engages and activates the engine starter motor. When the key is released, the switch will return to the on position. The key must be turned to the off position before trying to restart. To the right of the dash panel is the switch panel. The heater fan switch is a four position rotary control. Turn clockwise to select low, medium and high heater airflow. The heater temperature control can be rotated counterclockwise for cooler air, clockwise for warmer air. Push the fifth wheel floodlight rocker switch up to turn it on push it down to turn off. The headlights must be on to use this light. The cab interior light switch operates a dome light. It is also on a rocker, up for on, down for off. The headlight tail light switch is off at the center position. Push up to turn on headlights, tail lights and clearance lights. Push down to turn on parking lights. The windshield wiper control is a three position rotary switch. Rotate the knob counterclockwise for off. Rotate clockwise one position for low and two positions for high speed wiper operation. Push the knob to activate the windshield washer. The parking brake control is set by pulling out the yellow knob. Push in the knob to release the parking brake. The transmission control buttons are operated by the right hand. Select R for reverse, N for neutral and D for drive. The Allison transmission operates on a variable speed power curve. There are no gears to shift when torque requirements change. The transmission cannot be shifted out of neutral until brakes are applied. The engine must be started in neutral. The fifth wheel control is a three position lever. Lower powers the fifth wheel down. Hold maintains elevation. Raise elevates the fifth wheel. Never allow anyone to place any part of their body under a raised fifth wheel unless the boom is adequately supported. When depressed, the fifth wheel lock control releases the fifth wheel lock jaws and releases the trailer. Depress the trailer air supply valve to supply air pressure to the trailer brake system. Pull out the knob to evacuate trailer system air pressure. The throttle control pedal increases engine speed when depressed. Release the pedal to reduce engine speed. Depress either brake pedal to apply brakes. Brakes should be applied slowly except in emergency situations. Trailer brakes are also operated by the pedal when both trailer air hoses are connected. A series of warning and indicator lights are located above each side of the dash panel. Furthest left is the left turn signal indicator. Flashing indicates the left turn signal is operating. The fuel light indicates low fuel level. 
A lit charging system indicator alerts you to a condition within the electrical system that is causing the battery to become discharged. The low air warning light will come on and a warning buzzer sound when the air system pressure drops below 60 PSI. The high beam indicator shows that the headlights are on high beam. Above the right dash panel, the engine red warning light alerts you to one of three conditions, low oil pressure, engine coolant overheating, or low coolant level. If you see this light, shut down the engine immediately and notify your supervisor. The electronic engine yellow warning light indicates a minor fault with the engine electronics. Notify your supervisor immediately when this light is illuminated. You may continue to operate the vehicle. The wait to start light indicates grid heaters are heating for a specific interval prior to ignition. Do not crank the engine until this light turns off. In colder weather, it will stay on longer. The check transmission light indicates that a fault code has been logged for the Allison transmission. The brake light indicates the parking brake is set. The right turn indicator light flashes to show the right turn signal is operating. Your capacity tractor is delivered with a very useful information packet. Inside, you'll find a detailed operator's handbook, an engine owner's manual, a transmission operator's manual, a transmission diagnostic code book, a capacity parts book, and a warranty claim form. Also included is a warranty authorization card. It's essential this card be filled out and returned to capacity within 30 days in order to activate your warranty. Please be sure to fill in the comments section to help capacity better serve you in the future. Pre-op check. Follow the pre-operation CDL checklist as each shift begins. If you're not sure what's included in this list, speak with your supervisor. Inspect under the vehicle for any leaks. Inspect front tires for uneven wear and underinflation. If in doubt, use a pressure gauge. Check front for body damage. Check right side for body damage. Check rear differential for leaks. Inspect rear tires for uneven wear and underinflation. Check rear body and frame for damage. Check left side for body damage. Inspect the fuel tank and fuel cap. Check the trailer thoroughly for visual defects such as leaks, frayed hoses, worn insulation, and loose parts. Report any defects to your supervisor. Check that all guards and other protective devices are in place and secure. Watch for fire hazards when refueling and avoid standing downwind where spilled fuel could reach you. Replace fuel cap securely. Enter facing inward using a three-point stance and be sure to buckle up as soon as you get seated. Sit properly and in an alert position. Be sure the transmission is in neutral before starting the engine. Make sure the parking brake is pulled out and engaged. Start the engine from the operator's seat only. It's a good idea to look around to be sure no one's on or near the trailer. Turn the ignition key to on and watch for the wait to start light to go off if your tractor is so equipped. Depress the accelerator slightly and hold. Turn the ignition key to start and hold until the engine starts. Don't crank for more than 30 seconds. As soon as the engine starts, allow it to idle and check the oil pressure gauge to be sure the engine is getting lubrication. Allow it to run at low idle for a few minutes before accelerating or placing it under load. Check all other gauges and instruments for proper operation. Look for any warning lights. Test brakes to make sure you'll be able to stop and stay stopped. Observe braking air pressure. Never operate the tractor with less than 70 PSI as indicated for either system since the volume of air required to stop may be greater than what is available. Be sure you can control direction of travel and speed. Shift the transmission in both directions. Remember, the brake must be applied when shifting. With the transmission in neutral and the brakes applied, accelerate and decelerate the engine to make sure the throttle works correctly and returns to idle properly. Turn the steering wheel right and left. Be alert to any change or feel in steering, including increased steering efforts, unusual sounds when turning, excessive wheel play or pulling to either side. Recheck lights, mirrors, horn and other safety devices. When preparing to end your shift, place the transmission in neutral, set the parking brake, and turn the key to off. 
Engines which are hot or have been under a heavy load should be allowed to idle to cool down before stopping. If the vehicle is to remain idle for several hours, the fuel tank should be filled to prevent condensation. Check with your supervisor for any additional pre- and post-operation procedures. Picking up and pulling. Raise the fifth wheel if necessary to pick up the trailer slightly when backing under it. Back under the trailer until the fifth wheel latches securely. Raise the trailer landing gear just off the ground. Place the transmission in D and make a test pull. Move forward just enough to be sure the kingpin is locked in the fifth wheel. Place the transmission in neutral before lifting. Exit the rear of the cab and hook up both service and trailer brake release airlines and electrical connections. Always make these connections even if the trailer is to be towed only a short distance. Remember, the blue line must be connected when operating on a public roadway. Raise the fifth wheel high enough to clear any obstacle that may be encountered to prevent damage to the trailer landing gear. Push in the red trailer air supply knob to release the trailer brakes. Check that any wheel chocks and obstructions are clear of the trailer wheels. Pull the trailer to the desired location. Spotting Trailers Position the trailer in the desired location. Pull out the red trailer air supply knob to set the trailer brakes. Move the fifth wheel lever to the down position and lower the trailer and fifth wheel until the trailer rests on its landing gear. Allow the lever to return to center position after lowering. Make sure the trailer rests solidly on its landing gear. Disconnect the air and electrical connections from the trailer. Push the fifth wheel release valve to unlock and hold it down. Slowly drive the trailer jockey away from the trailer. Tilting the cab. The cab can be tilted to gain access to the engine, transmission, and hydraulics. Push down on the cab tilt lever under the battery box. Be sure the safety latch bar is locked securely into any one of the six holding positions before proceeding to do work. Prior to lowering the cab, make sure everyone is clear of the cab area and that tools and equipment have been removed. Raise the cab slightly, then pull the safety latch bar cable with your right hand while lowering the cab by lifting the cab tilt lever. Remember, never get under a raised cab unless the safety latch bar is engaged. Stay clear of descending cab and platform. Safe operation. Never allow anyone to stand inside or outside the cab on any step or walkway when operating the trailer jockey. Go slow in congested areas, over rough ground and on slopes. Keep your speed slow enough so you are in complete control at all times. Don't make sudden maneuvers with an elevated trailer. Avoid crossing obstacles such as ridges, curves, lumber, railroad tracks, and chocks. Give loaded vehicles the right of way. Follow your employer's traffic rules on the job. Watch out for other vehicles. Before backing up, check the area behind the vehicle to make sure it is clear of people, animals, and objects. Pull out of your space slowly, making sure your load is following properly. Look in all directions as you pull out of a blind area. Please read the caution and warning stickers applied throughout the tractor. The manufacturer has placed them there to maximize your safety and efficiency. Finally, here are some do's and don'ts to keep in mind each day. Do inspect your trailer jockey before operating it. Don't operate a defective machine. Report all deficiencies to your supervisor. Don't ram under a trailer. It is safer and reduces damage to ease in with the fifth wheel at the correct height. Do position the fifth wheel to lift the trailer slightly before backing into the kingpin. If the fifth wheel is too low, you can miss the kingpin and hit the trailer with the cab. Do make sure the kingpin is attached and make a test pull before releasing the trailer brakes. Do make sure the trailer is raised high enough to clear any obstacles or ground if the tractor wheel goes into a depression while traveling. Do disconnect air and electrical cables before releasing the fifth wheel and pulling away. Do lower the trailer onto the landing gear before releasing the fifth wheel jaws. Don't travel too fast in the yard or turn corners too fast. Don't shift between forward and reverse without coming to a complete stop. 
Don't haul a loaded trailer unless both air hoses and the electrical connector are hooked up and the trailer valve pushed in to release the trailer brakes. Always wear seat belts when the trailer jockey is in operation. Well, that's the overview. Don't forget to review the operator's manual too. It has even more detailed information and describes a few additional features for specific situations. Happy hauling!